The Tomb of Annihilation is a villain unto itself, but I also talked to the D&D creators about its creator, the Lich, Aserarach. With this story, Aserarach sets things into motion and then kind of steps away and leaves you to face the true villain, which is the tomb. Uh, that's what you're up against. That's the major antagonist. And uh, however, you can encounter a Sarak in this story. That's not to say he's just gone. He is present and you can actually confront him, which is fun. But you're right. He, in this story, he is really a catalyst. And I think that's very in keeping with the original Tomb of Horrors. He kind of, in the original Tomb of Horrors, he lures adventurers to his tomb and watches with glee, sets all the traps in motion, and then just lets them die horribly. And it's the tomb that you're up against. He's the guy who builds the place that tries to kill you and then walks away, you know. Um, I don't think he's the type, he's not the big, he's not just a boss monster. And honestly, when you're that powerful of a lich and your phylactery is in a place nobody can find, you can't really kill him anyway. He'll always come back. So, I mean, really, you don't matter to him. No, you don't. That's part of his personality is you are just soul energy to him. Uh, you are a, you're a monster energy drink for a Sarak, you know. You don't talk to your monster energy drink. No. He, he has no emotional investment in in your life, you know, and he does not, he's got no personal attachment to you. You are just a powerful adventurer who's arrogantly thinks you're hot shit and he is going to put you down. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's a very, very different villain. I think one of the things that we try to do with each of our stories is either go back to a villain in the past who has some resonance with the community or try to come up with a villain who doesn't match any of the villains we've done in D&D &D before. And that'll be our challenge going forward as well. So, you know, part of what we wanted to do with, uh, with pretty much everything in 5th edition, uh, in addition to Sarak, is say, okay, let's look at this long history of all these things, and let's um, sort of find the best truth through all of these changes that happen uh, to whatever it is, whether that's a Sarak or... Um, you know, uh, the owl bear or whatever, and try and find kind of the best version of it to, to bring forward for the new audience of the game. Okay, he's, been, he's had lots of weird iterations yes. over the editions. Yes, um, he's had a, and a remarkable amount of canonical inconsistency has right. been introduced over the years. And, and it's weird because Aserak is really inconsistent in the lore. It's one of those elements where um, people clearly like the idea of Aserak and like the idea of Tomb of Horrors, but then came to Aserak with very different ideas of what they wanted to do with that character based upon their own personal experiences as opposed to like knowing what the brand was doing as a whole. So, you know, in, in one adventure, uh, Aserak is just a human necromancer. In another one, he is a tiefling. In another one, he is actually a cambion. In another one, you know, he has horns. In another one, he doesn't. You know, like there's all kinds of different depictions of Aserak based upon um, sort of who was doing the writing at the time. So the Tomb of Horrors is, is in first edition just like a hill. And in fact, you, there's not even an entrance, like you have to dig your way inside. Um, and then in Return to the Tomb of Horrors is like a whole uh, necropolis and city with necromancers that have built up around this, this hill on a cult, sort of a Sarak, uh, and so on. And then in later pro projects uh, and products, uh, things go whiffly waffly. There's one in the Against the Giants uh, Adventure 4th Edition. You time travel back in time and meet a Sararak when he is young and kill him along with his Warforged bodyguards. Okay. <laughs>